Attention wrestling fans, you're now about to listen to the men coming down the aisle from the main streets of South Elgin, Illinois, with a microphone in his hand and questions on his mind. This is What Do You Say with D. D. J. Welcome, everyone, to episode 25 of What Do You Say with DDJ. My name is DDJ, as always, and uh, thank you so much for being here to uh, listen to this. Uh, yeah, 25 episodes, a uh, quarter of a way to 100. Joining me this week is the very lovely uh, Chicago sweetheart, Miss Kate. She's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoy this interview. I know I had so much fun talking to her. So be sure to grab your favorite cold beverage, a snack, get comfy, sit back, listen, and enjoy uh, episode 25 of What Do You Say with DDJ? And my guest this week, Chicago sweetheart, Miss Kate. This is P.L. Myers, a shot to the top, pro wrestling's manager extraordinaire. And there's only one thing you should be watching, one thing you should be listening to, and that's the man himself. What do you say with DDJ? All right. Uh, welcome to another episode of What Do You Say with DDJ. And this is actually the momentous 25th an- or not anniversary, 25th episode of What Do You Say with mm-hmm. DDJ. And joining me for this very special landmark episode is a uh, lo- local girl, at least local to me, because I'm not too far from her. Uh, she is known as Chicago Sweetheart Missa Kate. Missa, how are you doing today? Good. Not bad. I'm being unprofessional that I didn't turn my vibration off on my phone yet, but I'm good. How are you? <laughs> That's, I'm, I'm quite all right, and that is perfectly fine and stuff. We, had, we were just here to sit back, to have a good time, and talk a little, some, talk some about wrestling. So Awesome. And that's so, so, so my first question for you, and this is a question I usually ask everybody, what I have on my show is, uh, how did you discover pro wrestling? So, um, I've had, it's weird, but I've had two first stories. I always say first, uh, two interaction, first interactions with wrestling. Awesome. Um, yeah, yeah my first time was, oh, I can't even remember how old it was, but I think I was around six or seven and. I was watching um, TV with my grandfather, who he was blind at the time, mm. and um, we were, I was just flipping through the channels, and I came across wrestling, and the match was John Cena's debut in Chicago, of course. Oh, yeah. Um, against Yeah, and I was like, like, looking back now, I'm like, oh, this is so, like, poetic, but <laughs> I remember watching, and I was like, oh, this is, like, really interesting. And then my grandpa, because he was blind, he didn't know, but he just listened to it, and he was like, no. Turn that, he, he's European. I can't do a good accent, but he's like, no, <laughs> turn that off. Da, 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 that's bad for you. You're going to die if you listen to it. And I'm like five, six, whatever <laughs> years old. I'm like, well, I don't want to die. So I turned it off immediately. Later, I figured out he was saying that, you know, he met kind of like, he was referring to an ulcer in my stomach <laughs> uh-huh. because he walked back in the gorgeous George days where it was like they were betting and like this is like no this is legit like people right. were fighting over the one and like yeah so he's like I didn't want that for my granddaughter um but I'm like still don't tell your granddaughter she's gonna die from watching something but anyway <laughs> um but yeah that was my first encounter and then I didn't watch wrestling again until um I think it was 2006 or so when I saw it was Matt Hardy versus Edge in a ladder match okay. um, with Lita. Edge was with Lita at the time, and it was for the uh, contract of whoever won the contract stayed on Raw. Yeah, that was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> and most people that know me know I, I have a pretty good knowledge of wrestling. I think that was 05, and I think that was, if I'm not mistaken, I think that was when they went back to the USA Network, because I know that, remember that being a very big episode, so. Yes, yeah, yeah. I see you there you go I like it (laughs) I like the facts um but yeah so that was my second encounter and I remember seeing Lita and during that match she was just like getting involved with Edge and Matt and with the guys and at that time I didn't know about the actual story or the storyline or anything I'm just like involved in this match I'm just like well I wrestle with my guy friends like that we joke around I'm like she's a badass I'm like she 
she's like, I related to her in that sense. Well, not the badass sense, but like in the sense of like, she wasn't scared to get in there with the guys. Right. So I was just like, oh, and I was hooked. Um, but it was funny because I believe when I first saw it, it was technically in Spanish because over the weekends I would watch her. Um, my grandma worked at a church mm-hmm. and so she had a babysit me and her babysitting me was me sitting in the Sunday school room um, watching TV. And again, I was flipping through the channels and I saw wrestling and I saw that match. So the whole match is remind you like going on in Spanish, but I'm just like, what? <laughs> so I don't technically know what's going on or like I could kind of hear what's going on under the Spanish commentary. But, um, but yeah, so like every Saturday, that's how I would watch or Saturday or Sunday. I forget what day it was on, but at like noon, mm-hmm. that was my regimen. I'd watch raw in Spanish. But then during the week, I found out there's SmackDown. So then I'd watch SmackDown on regular cable. So now, yeah. did you watch that in English or Spanish as well? English. <laughs> that was English because I because I, I didn't have um, I had basic cable. I had like the you know, you're from this area. So you have like the two, five, two, seven, five, seven, nine, nine yeah, 11, 32. Yeah. yeah. So pretty much you have the, these 10 channels and it was on. um I know they switched there, like on the CW, I think for a while. Yeah, it was but like Channel 50, if I, I believe. If yeah, I'm yeah, but at that time they're on Channel 50. Yeah, mm-hmm. so yeah, so I just had the basic of the basic cable for the longest time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so USA had to be watched in Spanish. <laughs> so, so, to... so how long was it? Did, did you uh, before you actually were able to start watching Raw in English? Um, I think I was. I want to say fourth or fifth grade. That's when we actually got uh actual cable mm-hmm. yeah but other than that it was i would say at least a, well i don't know how old was i i don't know but it had to be at least a minimum of a year watching okay. it in spanish <laughs> a so, minimum, so, yeah. so i gotta ask then obviously you know you're watching raw in spanish and like you can see the action but not really understand what's going on because you don't understand what the announcers are saying how much mm-hmm. of a different was it for when you actually were able to start what well, when you watch smackdown in english and could understand what was being said how much of it how much more how much of a difference did that make for you in terms of like enjoying the product and understanding what was going on what you were seeing on tv it added to the experience because i was already into like watching it even though i couldn't really understand what was being said Mm-hmm. So actually watching SmackDown and hearing it in English, which I'm like, I need to learn Spanish anyway, but um, <laughs> and actually learn or listening to it in English, it just added a whole new, um, I guess, look on it. And it mm-hmm. just added to the experience more. So, um, and it helped me like understand wrestling more. And um, if you listen to the commentators they actually give you like cues here and there for certain things. So I started picking up on that, but um, yeah, so it was, Definitely a different experience, but I also liked the fact that me watching it in Spanish just kept me focusing on the action. Right. So that's how I feel like I, I had both the best of both worlds, meaning like even now, sometimes I'll watch matches without um, sound. Mm-hmm. Like I could block it out or something like that and just focus in on what's being done in the ring. Um, and I think it's due to that, um, that helped me learn and that helped me um in wrestling in general. So, yeah. yeah. So I think I know what one of your answers is going to be to this next question, but I'm interested to see if you had any more. Um, when you started getting into wrestling, who were some of your favorites, at, at, like your early favorites when you first started watching? Lita and John Cena. <laughs> okay, I knew Lita was going to be one of them, but I was anxious yeah. to see if there was anybody Lita's else. Always so. Lita's always going to be number one, but Cena's going to be second. Um, he was my first yeah, like you know you always have like a first celebrity crush or like we'll say crush in general in life right he was right. those for me yeah <laughs> right. he was my first like celebrity crush as well as like guy crush so yeah <laughs> I, when he was but when he was dr thugonomics not when he was like dad john cena now you know i'm not know. Him, but <laughs> yeah yeah i i like the old uh i loved uh dr thugonomics john cena and mm-hmm. uh, i love that she said lita's because she's actually uh one of my favorite women wrestlers of all time as well too. So, and she's actually very, I'm lucky enough to have, have, having been able to meet her before and she's just as cool in person. So that's what I heard. I'm just like, oh, I, I, I was going to be given the chance um, in 2020 to meet her, but obviously because of the pandemic and stuff. Um, and she was actually going to, I don't want to say train me, but it was almost like a tryout 
mm-hmm. sort of ordeal slash um what do you call uh, oh i can't think of the word right now what do you what is it called when you go to get experience you pay, oh my god i can't remember what it's called seminar a seminar, seminar yeah. okay yeah, yeah yeah yeah. i was like oh it's right there um but yeah it was like kind of like a tryout for a company slash seminar slash a bunch of other things but she was going to be one of the people involved mm-hmm. um and I was like excited, but I was like, what if I like pass out or just start bawling my eyes out when I meet her? So I'm like, that was always in the back of my head. So I'm like, maybe it's a blessing it didn't happen because God knows what would have happened when I met her. I don't want her to freak out in the first experience that I have with her um, in case that's the only experience I have. Right. But yeah, but yeah, I've only heard good things about her. Yeah. So that's where I'm like, okay, I think, I think maybe it would be okay knowing that now because they always say don't meet your heroes. Yeah. So that's always like a big fear for me. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, not judging from my experience with her and the type of person that you seem to be, you know, during our conversation so far, I, I, I think you would have been OK. And I'm sure she's probably it wouldn't be the first time she's had someone openly weep in front of her and stuff. So that's true. Yeah. Like AJ Lee publicly did it on the network. So <laughs> I was just I was actually just about to bring that up and stuff. So and I mean, she she publicly wept in front of me when she met Lita, but she ended up doing OK for herself. Yeah, yeah, she she was all right, you know, longest reigning Divas champion for a while there. She did she did okay. <laughs> yeah, she you know longest uh, at the, before uh, Nikki Bella, she was a lot. Yeah, like you mentioned, longest reigning Divas champion. Yeah. She married hmm. CM Punk. I believe she's got a book out and stuff. Yeah, she's yeah. doing all right. I read the book. So. Have you read her book? I have not yet, but I've heard it's really good. Have to. It's it's very. She's very like as you know, she's very witty, mm-hmm. and she turns. Um, I don't know if you've heard like any thing about her life or what's kind of in the book but she just kind of as you know she talks about her upcoming and whatnot her upbringing and um, right he makes she's really good at making light of it well, that's and good. she does it in a comedic way mm-hmm. to where oh wow this is really sad but she you could tell she's like no this is like she's kind of like oh this is like a lesson sort of thing right so she turns out positive which i'm like oh that's awesome so in a funny way but yeah what you I think you definitely like it. It's definitely a reader. It's I'll, I'll definitely I'm, I'm I've got a couple books I'm um I'm I've got one I'm reading now. I've got a, uh, another one um ready to go after that. So I'll just have to add that to my pile. There you go. And that's so. So uh well, actually you know what this will be a new question I've asked on this show uh, since we're talking about the books and stuff. Uh you I'm assuming you've read a lot of like the wrestler biographies that are out there. Yes. <laughs> Uh, which one would you say was your favorite and why? Um, honestly, I think, well, I, I, I think AJ, as of right now, AJ Lee. Well, oh. I've read Lita's, uh, it's hard. I like them for different reasons because I could appreciate them from different reasons. Mm-hmm. Like Lita's book, um, she talks about, again, she grew up, she was a tomboy and whatnot and how she like pretty much just went to Mexico, didn't really know anything but like high school like what she learned in high school of Spanish and how she got around there and stuff how she met Rey Mysterio Mm -hmm. so like hearing that experience and stuff is like it's like mind-blowing because I'm like I want to do that but I'm like the freaking courage that it takes to actually go off and do that I'm like that's amazing to me um and then you have AJ Lee who you know like uh she's very public about her um uh you know being bipolar and um I'm trying to be um you know, mental health is like a big thing, obviously. Mm-hmm. So that's what her book's about. And I'm like, that um, relates to me because I do have family members that have, uh, you know, mental health and whatnot. So, um, but she, and just seeing how she was then and how she went through all of the negative stuff to see where she is today. I'm like, that in itself is amazing to me. So I have different favorite, or I have, I like them all for different reasons. I don't, I'll just say Lita by default, but. <laughs> Nothing wrong <laughs> but with yeah. that. What about you? Give me one. Maybe I haven't read it. Um, well, any of the Mick Foley ones are always really good, especially his very first one. Um, Have a nice day. Um, mm-hmm. One that, uh, that was, I'd probably say that was my favorite because it felt so like, it's just, you really. It, it, like you kind of knew who Mick Foley was before reading this book. Cause you know, he'd always been pretty open about who he was and where he came from, you know, 
like on, on screen mm. and stuff like that, but just to kind of really know what he went through to get to where he is mm. and, you know, and seeing where he's at now and with all the things he's doing and that it's, it's, it's just a really cool story. Um, but I've read his, um, I, you know, uh, Jerry, the King Lawlers was really good. Um, what, and the one thing I really liked about his was I got to meet him about almost 20 years ago for the first time. And, mm. uh, he um, was doing a signing and the guy, he was doing a signing at a comic book shop and the gentleman that owned the shop uh, invited me, my best friend and I to stick behind. Cause I, I think we drove like about in maybe an hour, an hour and a half to the signing. We went from Aurora, Illinois, where I'm originally from. We drove all the way out to McHenry oh, okay. and stuff, you know, and he invited us to stick around, you know, after the signing was over, you know, and then we got to listen to Jerry tell some stories and a lot of the stories that he told us were ended up being in his book. So it was always kind of like, you know, like reading about him, like, yeah, I was there, you know, and he got to hear him tell those stories in person. So those are probably a couple. Yeah, like an extra inside scoop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then like right now I'm reading the one, um, one that you might want to look into is the one that, uh, Keith Elliott Greenberg put out, Keith, Keith Elliott Greenberg, excuse me, put out about the indie wrestling revolution that basically okay. talks about like, you know, the form, you know, behind the scenes of like all in and just like what it was like the rise of the independent scene and stuff. That one I'm, I'm about maybe a third of the way through and it's really good. So if you haven't read that one, check it out. And then mm -hmm. actually after that, I've got the, uh, the young bucks book on state that's next on my okay. journey to read list. Nice. Yeah, I definitely, I have a lot of, I need to check more off. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm more of a, it, I need, I wish I read more, but, yeah. um, yeah, I definitely have a couple. Like McFoley, that's definitely on my list. Um, yeah, I didn't even know about the other books that you said, which shame on me, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah. no. There, there's a good list out there. Like I said, I know I, you know, like China, Kurt Angle, mm -hmm. um, Stone Cold Steve Austin did one. Um, Booker T, I, I read Booker T's was really good. At least his first one. I haven't read a second one. I know Jericho's got a couple out and stuff. So there's plenty out. Oh, Jericho never. He he comes. He has like a. Uh, how do you say like uh, I don't know he comes out with yearly books I feel like he has like so much to talk about yeah he's yeah, he's, one, he's one of my favorites so yeah that's so. oh yeah he's cool yeah he's, he's in my top 10 so I put it that way there you go. <laughs> so uh when um did you decide that professional wrestling was something that you wanted to actually get involved with um I think after I saw Lita and mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this is like a thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I was like, I totally want to do this. So um, after I saw that, I was just kind of like, yeah, I'm like sold. Like I'm hooked. Like I, you're not going to get, yeah, I just, I couldn't get out of my head ever since that moment. Um, unfortunately, like where I went um, to school and whatnot, because I was a time where I kind of got. I don't want to say bullied, but kind of like, you know, looked down at or looked at as like the weird kid that, or the weird girl that liked wrestling or something like that. And so because of that, it made me like retract my feelings for it, I guess. Right. And like, kind of like keep it on the hush where it was just like my thing. Um, and then I kind of had family members say certain not nice things about it so I was like okay maybe it's not for me maybe I need to go the regular like school route and mm -hmm. the work thing and um eventually I, it was just one of those things where I was just like I can't shake it we, they, we always call it like an itch like I couldn't like ever couldn't fully scratch scratch. that itch yeah I had to scratch it like <laughs> so I eventually did finally after I got my associates um I made a promise to myself I'm like all right you know what my family wants me to go this path. I'm going to get my associates be like, here you go. I mean, I'm still in school right now. Um, mm -hmm. but, um, at least I get the associates. So they know I'm still serious about school and I'm still serious about my future and whatnot. Cause I am. Um, but I'm like, this is still my life. I'm like, I need to do like, I just, I can't live my life with a regret of like, what if or something like that. Right, so right. yeah. So I just, yeah. So here I am today. <laughs> So, um, obviously, you know, you, you told me that, you know, there were a lot of people in your family who were saying not, not so nice things about wrestling, but I mean, obviously, so they were pretty, made it pretty well known that they weren't fans of professional wrestling, but did they, were they at least supportive of your decision? So once, um, I don't talk to a decent amount of 
family members that were giving me that bad criticism uh-huh. um partially for that reason but it was mainly uh my mom because she obviously she's mom so she's number one concern is like your health and she's mm-hmm. aware of the impact that wrestling can have on um somebody as far as like you know there is brain damage that can be involved or what like you can be extremely like seriously hurt and so um I already at that time when I told her I, I wrote her a letter because I couldn't tell her in person I was like hey I want to do this thing <laughs> um I, uh, yeah, once we got over the fear of everything, um, because she was still concerned in high school, I actually tore both my knees. So she went through that. I tore both my ACLs and I had surgeries. Yeah. For that. Not at the same time. I was just but, about to yeah, ask that. Yeah. <laughs> Not at the same time. It, one was freshman year. One was my, uh, junior year in high school. Okay. But, um, but because she went through that process with me, she already was, uh, and she knew how hard that was for me, but I mean, I got through it, but Um, she obviously doesn't want to see her child and I'm the only child get hurt or go through any of that again, especially if it's even more extreme. Um, so I understand the fear, but once she first, I think saw me have my first match, she was like, okay, she's serious. Like, this isn't just like a whatever. Um, this isn't just like a phase. Like she's like serious. Like she'll ask, she, she's happy about it now. She'll promote me. She'll give me ideas and stuff like that. But after every match, she's like, are you done yet? Are you done yet? Did you get out of your system? Are you good? I'm like, no, not even close. Like, I'm like, just, I'm just like scratching that. Like, I'm just starting a little. You're just getting started. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So, but yeah, everyone's supportive now. My grandma even came and she, and she does not like me. Yeah. And she does not like, she even want, like me watch or she even like watching me play regular sports. So now, um, and especially I had an intergender match with Brew Baker and she was not having that, but she was there. She was supporting me. So okay, so actually that you bring uh that last little statement there brings up an interesting question. What what are your thoughts on um because I know it's something that's very you know hot, hot, hotly debated you know. And, you know, and wrestling groups, you know, and organizations, Twitter, just basically everywhere. So what are your thoughts on uh, intergender wrestling? I love it. Um, I think it adds more to like stories and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, There's so many like different aspects of this that I want to go through, but just. Take your um, time. Wait, wait, wait. I'm under no time constraints, so. (laughs) But I think, but yeah, like it, it adds like everyone has different characters. Mm -hmm. so um me wrestling a guy that is smaller than me is going to tell a different story than me wrestling someone who is like four times my size you know what I mean um but I'm like that would go the same with say if I'm wrestling a girl like Sky she's smaller than me Mm -hmm. and I would wrestle and have a match differently than if I would someone like Nia Jax you know what I mean right yeah exactly and so that's how I see it. So I'm like, why can't it be that way with the guys as well? Like if I can do that with the women, I could easily do that with the guys. Um, mm-hmm. But I believe where a lot of frustration comes from is people are maybe like, sorry, I feel like storytelling is being lost a little bit. I, I know there's I, a lot of people out there yeah. um, <laughs> would agree with that. I think one of the biggest like per, per, per people that makes that statement on a daily basis. I don't know if you listen to busted open on Sirius XM. Um, I know bully Ray's r- real big on that. And I know that's one of his biggest criticisms about like a lot of the wrestling that's out there today is the lack of well, especially in the Indies, which I'm like, I get it. It's an indie company. So I, mm-hmm. I under from the business aspect, um, because I have me being me, I'm like, I love story. So I'll try to present like something. Mm-hmm. Um, And I know one thing that I kind of got was, you know, it's the Indies. So especially during this recent time, everyone was getting signed. So there, I had promoters say, well, we can't really do certain stories or it's hard to do certain stories because we'll start it, but then X, Y, Z would happen. And then now we don't have a story. So that's kind of why a lot of promoters are just like, and we'll just do a match that people want to see what you got to understand. And that's still awesome. Um, but at the same time, I feel like there still needs to be story. It's some aspect. Um, but yeah, so I lost my point. I'm sorry. No, but, you're good. But you're yeah, about, I, um, about story. So 
Yeah, but yeah, so that's one thing where I feel like a lot of people get frustrated about when it comes to independent wrestling um, because there's, don't get me wrong, like I, you could take, okay, so Ronda Rousey, right? Mm -hmm. She's a whole different animal, I understand, Mm -hmm. but because of her and crazy like crazy amazing like decorated background you believe that she could really beat up triple h or wrestlemania you know what yeah, i mean absolutely a chief yeah i i she's the male or female if someone looks like they can kick my ass you know i'm not gonna get in there i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do anything to put myself in that position right like she was in the olympics like yeah she was in, she's insane i love her um but again you can't have that same type of intimidation from somebody who does not have like any kind of background like that like mm-hmm. myself like I have a little bit of a kickboxing background but I never went as far as to like get a belt or anything like that um right. or but um so I wouldn't have that same kind of presence or that same believability uh, ability. yeah exactly so I have to understand that going into that match or going into that situation mm-hmm. but I think ever which again um I understand where the opposite end of the spectrum's like well this is make-believe so I should be able to fight anybody like equally, blah, 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 you know, um, which again, like if that's what you're into, cool. But unfortunately, like I'm into storytelling. So to me, this is my preference, but if that's your preference, then cool. Right. But I feel like there ha- that has to be reflected more. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it has to be a good balance. Right. So I, I think I, you're starting I, to get back to that balance, which is right. really cool. I 100% agree with that. Like story's a big thing with me. I mean, I, one of the things I've been a real uh, huge fan of as of late is the story with Roman Reigns, you know, and Jey Uso and yes. Kevin Owens and like uh, in my, uh, in one in my, in another podcast that I do with a couple of my friends, uh, we uh, talk, we, and it's like in conversations and stuff I've always said, and like on our, like we do a lot of like, you know, reaction shows after the pay-per-views, we do preview shows, things like that. And one of the things I talked about, on one of our podcasts was that I felt like that this piece with uh, Roman with Jay and even with Kevin Owens and stuff is the best Mm -hmm. piece of storytelling I've seen in like the last 20 to 25 years. And that people sleep on Roman. And I learned that. (laughs) Yeah. And I mean, I'm a huge fan of like story, but I like, you know, like the indie style, like, you know, like I, I I enjoy, you know, a, a good young bucks match just as much as I enjoy a Roman Reigns, you know, Jey Uso, Kevin Owens storyline for different reasons. Like I said, I like a little bit of everything, you know, I like, you know, like I why love, we like I, Mysterio is yeah. different from the reasons that we like, cause he was crazy doing all these things. Right. <laughs> and, and like, you know, intergender wrestling, my whole thing is uh, my whole, my, my viewpoint on gender, gender wrestling. I said, if done properly and can, you know, and with the right people and the right, you know, story, absolutely. I look at, you know, perfect example would be Tessa Blanchard and Sammy Callahan. I thought that was an amazing intergender match, you know, you know, mm-hmm. with the whole thing, you know, they main evented a pay-per-view Tessa Blanchard actually won the impact world heavyweight championship, which I thought mm-hmm. was an amazing moment. And mm-hmm. I don't know, I'm, I'm sure that had to, I'm sure you were aware of that. And like, what, what, what are your thoughts on something like that? Like, what did that, did that, did that like kind of give you any inklings or any more motivation to maybe pursue more intergender wrestling or of that nature? Oh yeah, definitely. So I, I believe, so I don't know. I don't think I saw that mask specifically, but yeah, I'm, I mean, the world blew up that day when she won. So it was known that she was now, you know, the impact champion. Um, I, uh, I don't know if the intergender match that I had with Brubaker was right before or right after that around the same time. But mm. I remember once I got like a little taste of it, I was like, this is freaking awesome. Like I want to continue doing this. Right. So when the when tessa won the championship i was like okay cool i was like so it's no now like women or men were starting to get on that even playing field you know what i mean right exactly. um as far as like we're considered serious talent now mm-hmm. like it's it's known we're not going to be a bra and panties show or a bathroom break anymore right um so that was amazing but um oh and i had another point my brain. I am so sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. This is, I'm, I'm really enjoying this stuff. One other thing, and maybe that while I'm saying this, this, cause this is another take I have on intergender wrestling. And you know, if this sparks something and helps you remember awesome, but it's like, you know, I know there are a lot of like, and this goes to a lot of the people that are critical of it. Nobody's critical 
you know, with Wonder Woman fighting Superman in the comics yeah. or, you know, in the movies and stuff like that. So, and I, and I kind of look at intergender wrestling as that same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that's how I see it. I mean, again, it goes back to like, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, there you go. You triggered me. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. Um, Zello. I don't know if you're familiar with the promotion. Zello. Yes, I, I was yeah. supposed to go to a show like about a year or two ago. I actually won tickets, but I couldn't make it because I had a, another, uh, like a, a, I think it was a bridal shower or some party to go yeah. to that I, the moment I got there, I said to myself, man, I made the wrong <laughs> You're like, I messed up. I should have went to the show. I should have, yes. <laughs> and I'll never make that mistake again, unless it's someone that I'm really, you know, close no, to. No, yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Just, yeah, I've yeah. heard of Zello Pro. Yeah. But I don't know if you heard recently, um, or up until recently, we've only had a women's belt there. So yes. now the most, the last show, we presented a new title that is now both for men and women. Oh, cool. Which I'm like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. And I'm kind of like, me being me with the wheels turning, I'm like, what if we get to a place one day where, because I know there's like a common, um, should we get rid of women's belts? Should we just make it all under gender? Um, I think certain places can get to a point where all belts are now under, you, or under gender. Right. Uh, I don't see why not, but I do understand that some people do like having the separation between the women's and men's belts, mm. which I'm like, yeah, that's cool too. But again, as long as it's like placed evenly. So an example of that is like how Charlotte and Sasha, you know, they, well, even going back further, Lita and Trish, when they right. first made the wanted raw for yep. the women's belt, you know what I mean? Yep. So as long as it's always that constant, like even playing field, I'm good with either way. If it's mm -hmm. all belts are intergender, if it's still ma men's belts, women's belts, you know what I mean? So right. it's, it's cool to see what the future holds and where it's going to go from here. Absolutely. So. I, I mean, like I said, I, I loved, you know, I love the fact that, you know, women have ma main evented WrestleMania and stuff. I think that was amazing and, mm -hmm. and, and long overdue and, I fully believe that somewhere down the line there a women's match will main event WrestleMania again. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I would love to see, you know, like we, you know, we had a get an all women's show, like, you know, evolution a couple of years ago and just absolutely. I mean, I, I, I love the fact that all these women are getting a chance to sign and show what they're really yeah. capable of because yeah, you mentioned about how they used to be all about the bath and break matches, the bra and panty matches and things yeah. like that. And while, you know, uh, 18 er, late teens early 20s old me thought that was yeah, the coolest thing ever because i'm seeing these women in yeah. their underwear as the more i got into wrestling and understanding what it was about and the more appreciative i've got of it i i would give give me you know give me bailey versus sasha banks in a 30 minute mm -hmm. iron woman match over you know sable versus jacqueline in a bra and panties match i will take that any day of the week so but at the same time i'm very i understand the uh no, versatility is the correct word or if it's versatility word all, versatility thank you i was like that does not sound right uh, <laughs> <laughs> i understand how we'll say i guess an example of that would be scarlet Bordeaux, who was yes. on indies we got playing nxt mm -hmm. um her main gimmick was you know she's freaking hot she's sexy so the that's gonna show. be her gimmick yeah the smoke show exactly and i'm like i still like having those different aspects of characters Cause I'm like, you could do so much with it. Mm -hmm. um, it gives people or it gives performers and workers like different options and we'll say different play things, you know what I mean? Right. So, um, so it's fun. Um, so I don't, I think as time goes on, more people will realize that hopefully. So mm -hmm. it won't just be looked at as, oh, she is X, Y, and Z because this is her gimmick. Like, no, that's her character. Right. Use that to your advantage. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, that's how I see it. But yeah. But yeah, so I, I, I'm I, just, I don't know. I'm happy where stuff's going. Stuff's very, everyone's thinking out of the box now right. more because of quarantine, I think. Everyone's just been so, they've been forced to like just rethink everything mm -hmm. and just kind of like, at least I could speak for myself, like it's made me um, realize a lot more and like it opened my mind to a lot more as far as like 
you know, have fun with this more. And I think a lot of people, including myself, like took, take wrestling so seriously, which it's meant to, because it's not a joke. It's not a circus act or well, maybe sometimes, but (laughs) But, um, like, it's still dangerous, but you can still have fun. And that's like at the core, that's why we all love wrestling because we're giant fans and we want to have fun. And yeah, so I feel like that's starting to come around more now and it's going to be more of a bigger, better mix. Awesome. So uh, kind of going back to your your career and stuff. Uh, so when you decided you wanted to become a wrestler, uh, where were, uh, where did you go to uh, start your training and who did you train with? So when I decided to actually, well, I knew I wanted to wrestle. It's just a matter of finding out a place where, and mm-hmm. uh, I kind of believe, I believe in fate and everything happens for a reason. Uh, the high school that I was going to had uh, wrestling shows in the gym. Oh, cool. Yeah. And that show was from Chicago style wrestling. So mm-hmm. that's how I first heard about them. And they would always at the, if you were a student at my high school, you got to go watch the show for free. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. So I was like, score. Uh, right. <laughs> I'm broke and I get to watch wrestling. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> um, and so after every show, they'd be like, oh, if you're interested in training, blah, blah, blah. And it probably took me 10 shows to like build up the court courage to even like message um, the main trainer there who's Steve Boz. Yeah. Just being like, hey, I'm interested. Um, can I come check out the school and stuff? You know, like I wanted to check out for myself to not saying it wasn't legitimate school, but you know, I'm a, I'm a chicken, like, well, I think, well, at the time I graduated high school and I still followed it. So I wasn't, uh, I was getting my associates now, mm-hmm. um, when I finally decided like, Hey, let's do it. Uh, and I wanted to check it out to make sure like it was legit. Cause I don't know what I'm getting myself into and whatnot. So checked it out, everything cleared out and yeah, I started training there and I was there for, I would say a year and a half before moving to freelance academy where I've been for the past two years um so yeah so just kind of been a little bit um a couple different training places (laughs) so being with uh now that you're training with freelance I'm assuming you've spent a lot of time working with Matt Nix correct yes and no he pops in and out um he's not a trainer there he's the owner the trainers there are Bruce Benjamin and Isaiah Velasquez Yes, I'm, um, I'm very familiar with both those guys, too. Yeah, but Nick's definitely, yeah, he pops in because he works at the Pro Wrestling Tea Store, yep. which is what uh, the Academy is attached to. Yep, I, so, I, I, yeah, I he literally definitely live at that store. store. <laughs> I live at that store, so, and I've seen the, I've seen where they, tra- where you guys train and stuff, and I think it's awesome. Yeah, it's, no, it's definitely, and it's crazy because I, um, I, I want to say I started there when it started being Freelance Academy. Mm -hmm. I was there maybe a couple months after it was already in the process of being freelance Academy. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy to even watch the start from there to where we are now, because I remember originally where we were, wasn't in like how you said, you saw it, the, where we are now, we were actually to the warehouse to the left of that Mm -hmm. before. And there was none of the pretty stuff, none of the decals, none of, it was literally just a ring in a warehouse with a bunch of boxes for the pro wrestling tea store. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's like no heat, no air conditioning, no nothing. So in the summer we're like sweating like crazy and the winter we're cold. Right. Um, but it was just like, it was cool. It was still like, you know, you're, it, it's just kind of what you have to do. So I'm like, whatever. Um, so it's crazy to go from that to now the facility that you see that's like posted on Instagram and social media and whatnot. Like it's, it's, it's very aesthetically pleasing and like, it's, yeah, it's, we have a heater. <laughs> yeah, especially so, this time of year. That's, that's big. Yes. Yeah. Especially in Chicago. Like it was, it was, it was brutal. I'm not going to lie. Uh, a couple, we were, I remember for probably two weeks consecutively, everyone was wearing two hoodies, two pairs of sweatpants, like layers on layers on layers. Like we're wrestling in gloves and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, But yeah, I mean, so it's crazy to see, like, we went from that to now we're like, oh, we have heat, so we don't have to wear all these uh, excessive amounts of layers. So, yeah. (laughs) So, uh, so how long uh, were you training before you had your first actual match? Um, I want to say 
seven or eight months or something like that, maybe even sooner. Um, I knew it was under a year, well under a year. Mm-hmm. And I remember being like, I'm not ready. No, <laughs> like, I, mm-hmm. I can't do this. Um, but like Bob's pushing me, he's like, no, you got it. So, um, so yeah. And luckily my first match was Shotzi Blackheart. Yes. Um, I love Shotzi. Yeah. Yeah. She's, let me say, and I'm happy she's not like a heel in NXT, so I don't have to keep faith. She is like one of the nicest people. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I couldn't have been more blessed than for her to be my first match. Um, and she was just so, oh, I just love her. Uh, no, Shotzi's <laughs> she was awesome. Amazing. She's someone that yeah, I hope when all is said and done, I would, love to, I would love to meet her because she just seems like she'd be a fun, fun time. Oh, she's fun. She's like, she's real. Like she's just, yeah, she's, she's a cool, she's a cool chick. Like she, like what you see, like, yeah, she's, she's ballsy. She's nice and all that stuff. So I love her. But, uh, and even like I was saying before, like about fate and whatnot. So my favorite color is neon green, which is her hair. Right. So, and when I was younger, you know, you create all these like crazy characters and whatnot, what you imagine yourself being once you are a wrestler one day. Right. Um, I mean, one of the characters that I created was like Miss Green or something like that. <laughs> and it was kind of based off of Mischief. If you, do you remember it's, Mischief? I've heard of her. Yes. Yeah. And she had like the green and black hair and she's all like, yeah. eh, and she's like a hard rocker and all this stuff. So um, once I saw her, that's where like Miss Green, which I'm like, oh, that's a horrible name. Uh, but like came into the picture and whatnot, obviously once you become a wrestler, like what you thought you were going to be is not at all usually what you create right um or what you end up being so but I just thought it was like funny I was like oh that's funny that like green's my favorite color you're kind of the idea that I was going for and this is my first match so I'm kind of like this is all happening for a reason like so and yeah I was very I I am very fortunate that even though I watched that match back and I'm just like oh my god you were so freaking new um I was so appreciative of it and I didn't have a horrible (laughs) debut match um, or like a a traumatic one, I should say, where I know a lot of people do. So I, I was fortunate enough that she did that for me. She didn't make it traumatic. She like made sure before, after, during, like, where you good girl, you know what I mean? So she was, yeah. So blessed, so blessed. Yeah. So, um, and what, if, um, I don't, I don't know if I, if I, if I didn't hear you, if you said this and I missed it, I apologize. Oh, what company was this for where you had your first match? It was Chicago style wrestling. CSW. Okay. Chicago style wrestling. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I was, um, only working their shows pretty much for, we'll say the first six to eight months of mm-hmm. me wrestling. Well, they're in their like sister brands. Um, but other than that, uh, and then I, the next company after that was kaiju wrest attack wrestling but um yeah so she that was at csw so now when you say kaiju attack wrestling is that like uh like because i've I've seen some of this kaiju stuff online and i think i got a dvd once it's basically almost like uh like can you explain what that is because i don't want to say something and be totally (laughs) off so i'd rather have you what is uh what is uh kaiju what'd you say kaiju attack wrestling yeah, so it's not what you're thinking. Okay. That's why <laughs> I wanted you to speak on it. Characters so. and like, yeah, I'm. I, I had no idea of this probably up until I would even say five months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know there was another kaiju. Oh, and really? Okay. Of, yeah. So the kaiju that I'm referring to was like an indie company that was in the Chicago area. Um, that the promoter, I guess, kind of got the. Obviously, he kind of got the idea from them as mm-hmm. far as having like the larger of life, larger than life characters, but in the same sense, um, more realistic, I guess. Like he brought it down a couple notches, Okay. but he still wanted it to be like a crazy fun atmosphere and he wanted it to be intimate. And um, yeah. So yeah, it's different than the one that you're thinking. <laughs> That's why I'm glad I let you speak on it. Cause I probably would have been way off. So yeah. But yeah, so, it was a fun place to work. Yeah. Sounds like it and stuff. So, um, so one of the people I wanted to bring up, because uh, like I said, this is again, what I'm, uh, is how I first, you know, was made aware of you is, you know, you talked about Sky Blue and I remember seeing her wrestle, like, I think it was one time out and I think it was Woodstock for Premier Pro Wrestling. Yeah. 
And I think that's where she got her start at and stuff. But mm -hmm. I know you two are. Uh, so how did you two come into contact with the with, with each other? So CSW. <laughs> okay. She actually started training there mm -hmm. when I. She started training there. Like I left and then she came right in. So okay. she was kind of like the, yeah, she was like the new chick that they have. Um, and, but she was already, she already trained for, I think like two or so, so many years before even going to CSW. Okay. And so the first time that we actually interacted was, um, our first match that we had together. And I remember, I think why we became such close friends is because of how that day happened, which was, um, the day of the show was actually the same day of the um, Dustin Rhodes seminar in Wisconsin. Okay. He, so, and I went to it, um, obviously it's Dustin Rhodes. So <laughs> Dustin's um, also in my top 10. So and a little bit of a fun oh, story here. So you, you, you talked about, you know, not wanting to break down in front when you, you know, when you were supposed to meet Lita, I actually met Dustin at uh, C2E2 last year and I almost did. Like I was on the verge of tears because uh -huh one of my favorites and I was so just like talking to him just how much he meant to me and I got I finished up before I lost it so yeah good he's awesome right Dust, he's like Dustin such a was amazing Absolutely yeah and he's like one of the nice so yeah. yeah he's cool he's like he's one one of the boys he he didn't when even when he was giving the seminar he never made it seem like oh I'm Dustin Rhodes he's like no I'm one of you guys like we're all this is yeah. our business you know what I mean right he's like he's uh and that's something that, like, I guess I appreciate. Like, I always, like, I was like, oh, that's what made him, like, so freaking cool to me. Because mm. you don't, you, again, like, you know, they say don't meet your heroes because you never know what to expect. Right. So, but meeting him and realizing, like, no, he's, like, he's like he was messing. Funny. Yeah, he was, like, throwing punches at me, like, joking around and stuff. Like, yeah. he was messing with everybody. So, mm. yeah, it was, it was cool to see, like, him outside. But anyway, sorry. I'm, I digress so much. No, it's all good. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that was in the morning. And I remember I had to like right after the seminar, um, obviously because you know you're tra you, we had matches or whatever. Um, so I had to run home, I had to shower, the whole makeup thing, get dressed, whatever, go right to the show. So I got there pretty much right when the show started. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> I know she was nervous, I was nervous because I'm like we haven't interacted yet at that point. We're like, how's this match gonna go? We only have this much time to talk about whatever and figure it out plan whatever mm -hmm. so yeah we uh luckily I got there and like we're talking stuff out as I'm getting my gear on and we probably figured it out within 10 minutes went mm -hmm. out there had like a match which you could find on YouTube um and uh yeah it was just it was weird like we could just feel the chemistry it was one of those that once we met each other we that like, anxiety went down and there wasn't that nervousness there's like a sense of comfortability so comfortability com yeah I get what uh, you're saying. yeah <laughs> you um guys just basically clicked right away yeah exactly so we like you said we just clicked so and I think we both felt that mm -hmm. and ever since after that match we were just like cool yeah we're girls now so yeah. that's how that happened yeah it was fun so obviously um Again, this is like how I was introduced to you and stuff was, you know, your, you know, your couple of appearances you made on the, uh, you know, the show with Steve Aaron and Steve at the Power Hour, and you guys are known as Too Nerdy. How did the concept of Too Nerdy come about? Because we're just dorks and we're nerds. <laughs> <laughs> so we were just like, there's two of us. We're dorks, we're nerds. We'll be too nerdy. Um, yeah. So it was like really simple because we we're just like, what if we tag? Because we would tag. I don't think it, we ever tagged just her and I, it was always like a three on three sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So we're like, well, if it was ever just us two, what we'd have to come up with a tag name, obviously. So we were just probably for a while. We were just like, every time we see each other, like, Hey, you ever come up with a name and no, still think whatever. Um, so we talk about it. And then one day we just kind of came up with it. So yeah. We're going to, I feel like we're going to be that tag team that never tags. <laughs> we're always going to be called too nerdy. We're always going to be like, oh yeah, we're a tag team. And then it never happens. Which to me, I'm like, that's kind of cool to me. Cause it's always going to be like, oh, what if? Um, but yeah, so that's how that came about. So obviously, you, you know, you say you're nerd, you're nerds and stuff. I love it because if you can't tell by what I have behind me, 
I'm 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 a nerd. I mean, if you if I I'll I'll have to set I'll have to show pictures of my setup down here and stuff, and you're gonna think to yourself, my my wife uh, used to always call me a big nerd. She still does, and that yeah. So, but I mean, it's just so obviously we all are though. What's that? We all are. Everyone's a nerd in their own. Yeah, way. we all have uh, things yeah. that we're nerdy about. We get nerdy about. We're pat. We get passionate about. You know, obviously you know, pro wrestling and stuff, but uh, what are some of the other things besides pro wrestling that uh, are you get passionate about or what make, what makes you one half of uh, too nerdy? Um, one thing that I think that we recognize, well, if you, like you said, you watched the interview of her and I, so you already know how we are together. <laughs> we're just weirdos. We just, yeah, make jokes, whatnot, but we're nerdy. Cause we're like, we're both, um, we just, we both found out we're both like obsessed with Scooby-Doo and we're talking about like the classic Scooby-Doo, not the new stuff that's out today. Like these kids don't understand. Uh, classic Scooby-Doo. Um, yeah. Like, where are you Scooby-Doo? Yep. And oh, like believe that. me. I, it was the stuff that was before my time, but I mean, I love that old school Hanna-Barbera stuff. Yeah. Like I could watch that now. And still like, I'll watch, I'm not going to lie. I'll watch Powerpuff Girls. It's on Hulu. Like it just brings me back well, to being a kid. Girls is great. Yeah. I always wanted to be Buttercup. I was like, she's so cool. And she's <laughs> crazy. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, she, yeah, she was badass, but like stuff like that, like just like dorky, like kid stuff or, mm -hmm. um, for me, I guess, I don't know if you, it's weird because I'm like, I don't count certain stuff as nerdy. Cause I'm like, they're hobbies and everyone's a nerd. So, but I like doing like, um, like the gear that I have, I draw out and I like detail, like detail everything, like before I go send it mm. off to get it made so like everything that you see me wear is like I'm creating this it's gonna I don't think that I'll be able to just be like hey free reign because I'm just so I'm such Evolve. a control freak yeah I'm such a control freak and I'm like no like I'm very um meticulous yes yes very and very particular where if and detail oriented where if something's like out of place a little bit it will drive me nuts I'm like no this needs to get fixed so um yeah, so it, Izzy from Freelance, he does uh, a lot of gear in Chicago. He he deals with me all the time, which I'm like, every time after, I'm like, thanks for dealing with me. I know it wasn't easy <laughs> <laughs> because I'm just like, so like, yeah. But um, yeah, but like stuff like that, or like I like doing artsy stuff or like just painting for fun or like writing random stuff. Um, I, uh, I don't consider myself a model, but I like doing photo shoots and stuff like that because it's fun. Again, it's another way to me. I see it as another way of telling a story or creating Absolutely. something or whatnot. Um, and then, oh, there's one more thing I was going to mention. And I, oh, oh, I used to do, so I love Halloween, favorite okay. holiday. Um, I used to, if you creep on my Instagram, I used to do some like prosthetics or not prosthetics, but like some, um, uh, with the uh oh my god what is wrong with I didn't finish my coffee that's why it's like oh. half of the <laughs> I'm still working on it so the brain's still like kicking in you know um but no like I used to do the um you know the fake gory makeup or like I did a venom special mask. effects yeah special effects thank you no thank fun. you you are helping me so much today uh that's what I'm here talk. for <laughs> But, um, yeah, so, like, stuff like that. Like, my stepsister got me into that because, um, well, I was already, like, into horror films and stuff like that, or horror films and gory films and stuff right. like that. And uh, she, my stepsister, Lexi, she's very much into the makeup, and her mom was, like, a beautician, did hair and makeup, so that's why she got into it. And she would teach me tips and tricks, and she kind of introduced me to that world of special effects where I'm like, oh, we could actually do this. And like, I would research how to do stuff and um, stuff like that. I haven't done that in a while, mm -hmm. which uh, Valentine's Day is coming up. So it's funny that we're talking about this because I had an idea in my head earlier to see if I can maybe have a little project come out, a little gory project come out. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. It'll be in the works. I can't guarantee it happening, but um yeah, but I just love like stuff like that. So any any anything creative, I'm like into. So it's fun. Gotcha. Now, are you a are you a like a are you a gamer at all by chance? So I can't consider myself a gamer. Okay. I I love like Tomb Raider. I okay. the first yeah. So like I finished a game one full game and then half of another one. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but that's why I'm like, I can't consider myself a gamer because I don't, I can never like go out and buy games and just sit down and like get into them. You know what I mean? I mean, I can, but like, I, I, I can never finish them because I'm always like on the go with everything. Yep. Um, so I can't consider myself a gamer, but I did once I had my knee surgery that I guess you can consider me a gamer then. Cause I'm like, that's all I had to do was just right. play games. So it was like a bunch of that. Like, I don't know if you consider Sims a game, but like I was into Sims for a while. Like, um, even going like when I was younger, my older cousins would always play like Pokemon, like the, you know, the old school. Oh um, yeah. I know where you blow into it and then put it into the yep. uh, old school. Yeah, Nintendo. The, yeah. So we would play like Pokemon and stuff like that. And um, so, yeah, like I, I love games. I, 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 I don't know. I like life. So <laughs> I like experience all this stuff. So yeah, I'm like, I, I think honestly, I prefer like uh, board games. <laughs> like oh, that, board there games you are... go. That's, I'm nerdy. There, there's the nerdiness, like that battleships and awesome. checkers and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. No, no, like no. old school, old school like gaming. I'm, I'm an old school gamer. How about that? I'm an old school gamer. All the cl- all the classic stuff in that, um, yeah. like Monopoly. Um, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> My 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 son who's five, um, he got uh, a while back. Uh, I don't remember if it was my wife that got it for him or my mother in law, but uh, he got uh, Monopoly Junior, and he was really getting into that for a while. And I remember playing it once with him, and he actually beat me. Really? Yeah. So nice. Pretty excited. Were about you that. like defeated, or you're like, I let you do that? <laughs> no, I was. I I because. You know, you try to, you know, as, as, a, as, a, as a dad, you know, you want to try to, you know, teach your kids to do the right thing. So yeah. when I lost, you know, I looked over him. I said, Matthew, I stuck out my hand. I shook his hand. I said, good job. And I said, that's what you do. I said, if you have, if you, if you're playing a game or doing something with somebody and you lose, you always go shake your hand there, that person's hand and say, good job. You know, trying to teach him to be a good sport. That's amazing. Good. And then you flipped over the Monopoly game after that, right? <laughs> He, now, <laughs> I guess if my wife, no, I, no, I'm, I, that's how I was raised. So, you know, I mean, yeah. that, no, it, it's awesome. Yeah. And that's so, but yeah, like I said, I'm more of a, you know, video gamer. I just recently started getting back into it and stuff, but, uh, one board what game, games do you play? what's that? Have you played? How about this? Um, there's one game that I was into. You remember the last of us? I've heard of it, but I've never played it, but I've heard it's, re- I've got a you couple have- friends that are really into it. it- I, don't, I only have Xbox, so. Oh, okay. It's, yeah, and that's all. I Apparently, I that's how not a gamer I am. I got an Xbox. I was like, oh, I can play games. I was like, no, you got the wrong uh, system. You should have got, like, a PS4 or something like that. And I was like, well, my bad. Like, I don't know. I just know you get a thing, and you put the disc in, and you play a game. Like, I don't know the difference. But, um, yeah, no, like, Last of Us, oh, it's a good game. It's very, it will emotionally take you on a ride. I've heard and that. It's, it's very, it's a long game Mm -hmm. um there's a there's times where I was like oh the game's over and it's like oh it's not even close to over so you'll have a couple of those so I think it's I think you'd enjoy it I think you'd enjoy it it's uh very interesting yeah I like it a lot and I need to play the second one which I I don't know if it came out yet or if it's I think it is out it is out I believe yeah um I I like said I have Xbox lately I've been playing uh Mortal Kombat 11 so yeah i suck at that game i suck at that game i always lose anything fighting i always lose yeah. like or anything sports i always lose I'm like, this is bullshit. <laughs> well, I've, but, like i said i played I, i've also played madden and nba and like i've played mm-hmm. madden uh for the first time in probably about three maybe four years and yeah. like recently and i was like man i was telling my friend who i'm getting ready to play start playing online with him and stuff i said man just you gotta give me a couple of weeks because i am rusty as you know what i had it and yeah. stuff so who's your who's your go-to team oh even though they they're not very good i'm i usually always play as the bears right you can't not like i feel like i'm cheating yeah. i but i have a loophole of um my stepdad's from boston so I would switch between the Bears and the Patriots. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, same thing. Like I'd always like pick the Bears. You're like, because you feel like you're cheating if you don't choose your team. Right. It's the same way with NBA. Yeah. I mean, I always somehow wind up playing as the Bulls, even though I could yeah. easily play as like the Lakers or in football, mm-hmm. you know, I could play as like the Chiefs or, mm-hmm. you know, even the, well, no, I would never play as the Packers. So. <laughs> 
I know, right? You can't do that. That's going into unnecessary that's, territory. That's, yeah, that's that's taking it to another level there. Yeah, let's let's not go. They're playing. Uh, do you know they're playing right now? I think right against uh, Brady. Yeah, and, uh, Brady and the uh, the Patriots. Um, I'm actually going to try. No, it's, to it's, uh, um, he's oh no, he's not part of the Patriots anymore. He's part of the uh, is it the, the Buccaneers? Chiefs? The Buccaneers, Buccaneers. I was like, it's something yeah. red. Uh, yeah. I'm just looking at it right now. Like I said, we're recording on um, Sunday. It's a little after 4 p.m. Central time, and uh, Patriot or not? I mean, I won't say the Patriots. The Buccaneers are actually uh, up by 11 points with about uh, in the third quarter. So I mean, it's 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 for all the the Packer fans out there. I'm not going to say haha because I I because the Bears. I'll say ha ha. <laughs> You'll say it, not me. That was ha-ha. just. Just, just that haha was not from me, DDJ. That was from, was uh, from I guess, Mr. Chicago Kate. sweetheart. And his, yes, Chicago sweetheart, Mr. <laughs> Kate. And by the way, I do want to say that Chicago sweetheart. It's not just a tagline. It's really you. You, you seem like such an, a genuine sweetheart. Oh, um, thank you. No problem. Pro- no problem. So, um, do you, uh, a couple more questions here, and then we'll start wrapping up. Um, do you follow uh, the current wrestling uh, scene any at all? Yes and no. As far as like, am I in the loop of what's going on with certain companies or like WWE? Yeah, do you like, AEW? do you watch uh, like Monday Night Raw? Do you watch uh, Impact? Do you watch AEW, NXT, SmackDown, all that stuff? So, yes and no. They've been going back to story now more. Mm-hmm. So I've been paying more attention. Um, if anything, I'll like keep up with like clips and stuff on the internet because everything's internet based now. Right. Um, if anything, like my, I definitely watch all the pay-per-views, mm-hmm. but I, I won't watch every like raw SmackDown NXT. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I watched the dusty classic, uh, for NXT. I did watch those, but yeah. other than that, I don't keep up with it as much as I used to. Um, which I probably should, <laughs> mm-hmm. but at the same time, it doesn't have the same feel because there's not all those fans there. And I feel like that plays like a major factor in a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I have been following the Alexa bliss and the fiend to an extent. Oh, I love it. Oh my God. I love it. And I'm like how she does her hair. I yes. did for um, Halloween. I played a, <laughs> instead of um, oh, who was instead of Pennywise, I was mm. Nichols, <laughs> who was like the bootleg of Pennywise. <laughs> <laughs> I just, like instead of going out and get a, getting a costume, I usually try to like. Well, sometimes I've I've like physically like made costumes, but like I usually try to put together different right. like outfits to make that costume. To, mm-hmm. So that way, it's like me mixed with whatever creature or character I'm trying to create. But um, yeah, I had the little buns and like someone was like, oh, you should start wrestling like that. And then she starts coming out with that. And I was like, damn, I was like, I wanted it to be my thing, but whatever. It's so cool. I'm like, it, I love her. I love her. I'm so happy. Like she, they couldn't have picked a more perfect person for this role. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm so into it. Yeah. She's really like, since they put her with the fiend, she's really just taken off and just really i again on my other podcast i uh, call the junkyard we we do we usually every show we talk about we review all the shows in wrestling and uh we recorded uh the episode will come out tomorrow but we were talking about just how amazing just how how cool it was like the whole thing she did with oscar just on you know raw last week you know where one minute she's you know the bubbly you know just yeah. you know bouncing around and stuff like that and the next thing you know the lights go out they come back on and she's just like this dark just like mm-hmm. basically like i like it it's like basically she would look like she wrestles like she's possessed by the fiend yeah i love it she's mm-hmm. i if she doesn't go into the hall of, and i'm saying it now i don't care if people could argue with me if she doesn't go in the wwe hall of fame i'll write a letter because <laughs> but I could, I could see her being it she's so like when it comes to character, I can't, anytime I've seen her, I'm like, there's nothing that this girl can't do. Right. And she's, like, as you know, she's obsessed with the horror films and whatnot. So I'm like, she's living her dream right now, Yeah. which I'm like, that's amazing. And it's cool to watch. Cause she's so good at it. Yeah. So, yeah I love watching this. Yeah. So that answer break kind of part answers my next question. Um, is there anybody else besides Alexa bliss that you're a really big fan of uh, with that? Like any of the major organizations right now? Yeah, uh, Bianca Belair. I know that she's been getting like hyped up a lot as of recent, but like I remember seeing her, her and Rhea Ripley. Oh, um, that's another good one. Yeah, I love Rhea Ripley. Um, as far as the girls are concerned, um, 
they when I saw them on um, the May Young Classic, mm-hmm. I was like, I'm we're definitely going to be seeing more than them. And if we don't, then I'd be so sad. But I'm like, there's something there. And um, Rhea Ripley at the time, she wasn't this like, uh, maybe it was like the second or third time that she came around. She got more grungy as time went on. Right. But initially she was like this like bubbly, like, ah, Ozzy, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever. Um, so it was, and even watching her, like what interested me about her because she played soccer for so long so I related to that and uh because I played soccer for a while um but watching her I was like there's more to her here than what she's giving so I'm like I'm excited to see what she has in store and obviously she's now Rhea Ripley of today and I'm just like her and Charlotte I love that man yeah Yeah. I'm like I I I think they need to do in front of a crowd i think they need to redo in front of a crowd well it, they did, it had a whole different aspect well it did get announced that it looks like they're gonna have you know everything you know fingers crossed uh wrestlemania this year will be in front of fans so you know maybe we'll we'll get you know Re- charlotte versus Rhea too in front of a crowd because i agree that it's just that match would have looked i think would have just it would have done it would have meant so much more i think there would have been so much more to it had they been in front of a crowd so yeah, and like from ex- I mean obviously I'm not WWE level, but like from experience of working indie shows that have like 5 to 10 people compared to indie shows that have like a couple hundred people. Right. It the like it 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 adds so much. Like I wrote a paper about it for school. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it like it adds such an interesting element and it gives you even more of an adrenaline rush. Right. Where it's like yeah, like people, like I know, like wrestlers and stuff say it, but I'm like the impact that fans have on the match mm-hmm. is so important, I think, and it it makes such a difference. Right. So yeah. I couldn't agree with you more on that because one of the things I said, like when you know the pandemic, you know, and it's hard to believe we're coming up on almost you know a a year of being yeah. in this situation and stuff. Um, like one of the first things I noticed, like when, you know, w- they were doing WWE shows and, you know, at the performance center in front of nobody mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that. One, I, and I would say this to my, my wrestling friends, I'd be like, you know, it just, if anything, this, this whole thing has taught me, it just shows how vital the crowds really are to the show and they do add something to the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to say this without sounding like an ass, <laughs> But like, I'm trying to think of a name. Well, it's not mean, but I know people could take it the wrong way. Like, there are fans that again, there's different crowds. Right. Um, but there are like certain crowds that they don't really interact with the uh, wrestlers or the match that's going on. Mm-hmm. Which again, I I've been like as I've um, become more experienced and learned more in wrestling, I found out that like places like Japan are like that, but mm-hmm. they're doing it out of respect. Absolutely. Um, I love Japanese they, crowds. Yeah, because they'll they'll wait for you to give them the signal. Be like, okay, cool. You know what I mean? But other than that, they're just like, oh, what are they doing? What are they doing? Oh, this is cool. Right. Um, but at the same time, as like if you don't know that as a wrestler going into that, man, it took me a while where I was like, why is everyone so quiet? Because I've worked a couple of shows where it was like that, mm-hmm. where they were just so invested in what was going on, they forgot to cheer or they just – whatever the case may be. But I'm like, at the same time, I'm like, that's cool. But at the same time, I'm like, you're here to have fun. Like, don't be scared to like get up out of your chair and like cheer or boo or and, like all that stuff. Like let it all out. This is the place to like, just like let it out. You know what I mean? Right. Cause I'm like, we feel that and we love it. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So don't be scared to cheer. Oh, no, trust <laughs> me. If you ever, if I, if I, well, once uh, we can start going to shows more often and that I'm definitely going to try to come, you know, I want to come check you out, you know, so I can inter- meet you in person, introduce myself and all that. And uh, okay. I am not afraid to get in, to interact with shows. I, I That's one of the reasons why I love going to indie shows because uh-huh. I love the interaction that yeah. the, the, the wrestlers have with the crowd. Like I'm actually uh, going to uh, one in April in Indiana and, you know, I'm really excited about it, you know, because I went to the, a show in October and it was just, yeah, I, I love the interaction and that. And I just, yeah, like I said, it's one of the reasons why I love going to indie shows is, is that interaction. And it's a family. It's a family, mm-hmm. like it's a community. I wouldn't say. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Like you, 
like I remember um like even us will say like as wrestlers I remember when NXT takeover came to Chicago mm-hmm. uh, it was on my birthday too it was on November 23rd uh, right before the pandemic hit so, so this was uh last uh this was uh 2019 yeah you I remember war games yeah you were there too uh, weren't you no but I, uh, I watched it on tv and and that so and I I'm I, oh god I would love to go to to go see see one of these war games matches in person. It was so fun, and it was like again the experience as a whole. Like I went with a a wrestling friend and whatnot, and we uh, met up with other wrestlers and whatever. But it was funny because we couldn't not go anywhere without seeing another wrestler. Like before mm-hmm. we went to the into the arena, uh, we obviously you know you get some to eat because i'm like i'm not paying for that arena food yeah, uh, yeah i always <laughs> eat before i go to the show for a ten dollar hot dog like i'm sorry <laughs> or like eight dollars um, for a slice of pizza and like then like seven eight bucks for a beer you know what i'll go i'll go to uh wherever get a slice of pizza and a pop for like four or five bucks and i'm good yeah i went to pan express and i got like the little panda bowl that was like seven dollars i was full the whole time i was yep. fine yep um but yeah so obviously everyone has that same idea and same mentality that we're all like running into each other at these restaurants and stuff before the show. Then during the show, we actually ended up sitting next to other indie wrestlers that I've been on shows with and whatnot. So we're like, Oh really? Like out of this whole arena, we still get, we still are next to people that we know and stuff like that. Right. Like what are the odds? Yeah, exactly. Like what are the odds? But, and it got to the point where I remember like, cause I got the nosebleed seat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, I remember like looking down and started looking for people and at me being funny, um, you know, wrestling with unicorns. I think Martin. I've heard of it. It sounds, it sounds, it, I, I, I feel like I've heard of it. Yeah. So Martin, he runs wrestling with unicorns. Um, if you're not familiar with it, uh, get familiar with it. They're freaking awesome. Um, they like, uh, they take clips of us on the shows and mm-hmm. they put it out there on social media to help get us more traction and just to bring more attention to us to help our careers. So that's why I love Martin, Martin and his brother. They're both a part of it. Um, But anyway, um, but yeah, so he, he was there and I remember like I kept finding him and like, I'll find you. And like, I was recording um, and sending him like Instagram, like shots or videos of himself. (laughs) They're like, I see you. I see you. He's like, you're such a freaking creep. But yeah, it was just funny. We kept like joking around. All of us kept joking around with each other. But just to bring it back to the point, yeah, like it's such a giant community. Like even like the fans amongst themselves, like we were the fans that day. So the, we were, you know, a community and like we met other fans that were like, hey, you're so-and-so and stuff like that, which that was cool. So it's like, it's, it's, I don't know. It's wrestling's freaking awesome. It, it really is. And like I said, the coolest thing about the, ha, ha, doing this podcast mm-hmm. is that um, um, it, it, a lot of it is, it's just that, you know, I, all the, a lot of the wrestlers that I've had, you know, on my show, I've gotten the chance to like, you know, see them in person at, you know, the show I went to in October and, you know, there, it was just so cool. You know, every one of them's like, you know, thank you so much for having me on your show. You know, they mm-hmm. genuinely appreciate it. It's just, yeah. I, and, and the, one, the main reason why I started doing this was because you, you know, people like yourself and, you know, some of the other, you know, people, the guys I've had on my show, you're actually the first female guest I've had on my show. So, you know, big, nice. up, big, big ups to that. Uh, oh, yeah. And that, but uh, just like, cause right now you guys don't really have like, much of a, a voice or a way to kind of yeah. get themselves out there and stuff not like say someone like you know a Rhea Ripley or you know all these people that wrestle for NXT WWE Impact AEW and stuff you know so it's like I wanted to give you guys you know a chance to quote unquote get yourselves over and get your voices out there and stuff just mm-hmm. to like if one person can come to me is like oh I really enjoyed this year you know your interview with so and so and I went and checked out a match then I've done my job so yeah. I just, you know, it, I'll go ahead finish your. I was just gonna say I, I love it because it's like it gives uh it gives you know people like yourself a chance to you know let the world know who you are let my audience know mm-hmm. who you are and I've always been fascinated with getting to know you know the yeah. people behind these wrestlers and stuff so. yeah and like from the wrestling aspect we appreciate that too because I'm like yeah like for the reasons exactly as you said mm-hmm. people 
only see like eight, 10, 15, however many minutes that I'm in that ring from mm. curtain to curtain, you know what I mean? And maybe like it for just for that show, they don't really, and that's if I'm able to interact with them um, besides the match, you know? Um, but yeah, so like this gives you a little bit more of like a personal look and like maybe I, I know I'm always, people <laughs> always tell me they're like, I never would picture you watching that or saying that or doing that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's cool when you realize like, Hey, Oh, she does do that. That is not what I thought of her at all. Right. But that's cool now that I know that of her. Right. So yeah, I agree with the examples that you're given. So I know we're appreciative of it. Cause I'm like, without you guys, we can't have this happen. Yeah. We could put out promos and we could say whatever, but it's still never going to like, you know, on social media promote ourselves, but it's never going to be the same as if we're interacting with you. So right. yeah, thank you. It's awesome that you guys freaking do this. Like you guys okay. literally take time out of your lives for like that's just amazing to me. Well, you it, it's the least like someone like like I I'm sure I could speak for you know like my friend Brad who you've been on his show you know yeah. with Steven you know Red and you know anybody you've done it you've done a, an interview or been on a show with and stuff you know I mean you guys do so much for us you know it's like I've always been you know the type of person that has that this is how I show my appreciation. This is my way of saying thank you for, you know, doing mm -hmm. what you do, because it's not, I know what you do is not easy, but it, I just want you to know that at least from, for me, it doesn't go unappreciated because I appreciate mm -hmm. each, it's not, it, every single one of you guys doing what you do just to entertain mm -hmm. people like myself. So. Yeah. And like doing these things too. And it, it like it, we, and again, I can't speak for everybody, but for myself, I'm like, it's, awesome because for the reason that again you just said like mm -hmm. it we our work's not going unnoticed you know what I mean because sometimes we can get in our heads and I know I'm famous for it uh mm -hmm. just like on the go or am I doing this right or am I okay and blah blah blah, blah whatever where am I in this wrestling world so right. like having these podcasts and these interviews kind of brings it down as far as like okay it's happening like what, what you're telling yourself maybe not be true like it helps bring it grounds us I guess you could say that's awesome and so like yeah so I'm like I'm appreciative that's why I love doing these I like I as far as I know I haven't said no and if I haven't answered I, again you know how I am with the emailing thing I'm so <laughs> it's so it took a minute to get here but I'm like oh, well you're gonna make it uh right but yeah so yeah I just I it's fun to me and I'm like I love meeting like part of the reason why I fell in love with wrestling is the community and whatnot. So oh, I'm like, wrestling community is I'm awesome. like, yeah, like I'm like, if it wasn't for wrestling, I would never have this conversation with you. I mean, maybe like you never say never, but the chances are very slim to not. Or, right. and I would have never met Brad and I never would have met or spoken with, um, you know, people in Australia or people in like Canada and like all these different countries and whatnot. And I'm just like, who else can say that? You know what I mean? How many other jobs can say that I mean if you're high on the totem pole yeah but for like a lot of people they can't have these experiences so I'm just like I'm grateful and it's freaking awesome that's awesome so a couple more questions here and then I'll let you get going and stuff so Sorry, um them. no 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 this has been great I, I I've enjoyed every single second of this and I think it'll come it'll I, I you know and I I'm assuming you have as well uh one question I had uh, a couple more questions I have one the first one is going to be who would you say, what would you say has been your greatest match so far and why? Ooh. I have different matches that I've enjoyed for different reasons. Um, You've done them all. The shot, oh gosh. Well, the Shotzi one, as I told you, um, cause mm -hmm. that was my debut match and it was a great experience. I've had different learning experiences as well. Um, as far as like, maybe they, they were like hard lessons or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but I think one of my favorite ones. Okay, we'll start with this one. Uh, Brooke Valentine. Have you heard of her? She's known in like Iowa. Um, I'm in I say that I have. And if she's listening, I apologize. <laughs> well, she's no, she's definitely she's starting. Uh, finally, I'm trying to get her to move to Chicago. She's getting closer. She lives in, uh, in uh, Indiana now. Okay. Or she lives in, or lives in Davenport or something like that. Okay. I don't know, but yeah, so she's getting closer. She's getting closer. But I had a match with her at Zawa, and um, that was the first time that 
uh, you know, wrestlers always talk about there's like this certain electricity or connection that you have with the fans. Right. That was the, for me, that was like the first time that I had that. And again, it goes back to because her and I uh, told a story and that matches on YouTube. I think it's on my channel. I'm not sure. Um, uh, if not, you could definitely search it up. It's there. Um, but I just remember coming to the back and uh, a lot of people giving us a lot of praise. And that was like, for me, that was like the first like, well, this is cool. Like I did something right here for once. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so having that experience was amazing. And I'm like, it, it just makes you want that more. It's very addicting. Right. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, like that match in general, like I, bro- like she, me and her, well, yeah, we went at it. Like we were going blows. Like there was one point, um, she gives me a legitimate forearm. I was like, wow, that was big. But it was like, I lo- I'm, I'm a freak. I love it. I'm like, yeah, let's get rough in there. <laughs> uh, uh, it's fun to me because I'm like, oh, now, because then you watching outside, you're like, oh, was that, is she okay? Was that, you know what I mean? Yep. Um, but yeah, it's fun to me. And so that was uh, the first match that I had that kind of experience with as far as, you know, telling a story and having the crowd be into it and interact and having that connection. Um, so that's a great match for me. And then the other one is, um, and I'll mention this and we'll go, oh, we can go to a different question. Uh, <laughs> I just have to get it out. Uh, she Lance, hashtag She Lance. Um, when freelance turn had the most women on the show in their like history of the show and they freelance opened up with the uh, first ever six woman scramble which I was a part of um, and throughout the show you know you had other females right. and which is why it turned into hashtag she Lance instead of freelance for a night <laughs> and that match that I had um again it was just like an energy from the crowd that was the first time that I guess I experienced freelance as freelance so what makes freelance so special um to work for and to like train at and whatnot so um even though there was like five other women in there we were all for the most part we're all pretty new or there's a couple chicks that were even newer um and the vets that were in there were vets to us but they were still learning so we were all kind of like in this weird bubble as far as like this person's been wrestling for a year and then the oldest person was wrestling for maybe four or five years or something like that Uh um which is and isn't a lot depending on how you look at it um for wrestlers that's like nothing (laughs) Mm -hmm. um uh but yeah so for all of us being pretty new and nobody really knowing who we were and everyone getting behind us like it was just amazing and uh, we had such positive feedback because of it. So yeah, it was, yeah, it was a good time. <laughs> okay. So my last question here, before I give you a chance to okay. plug it, you know, your merch and everything is, is if uh, past or present living or dead, if you could book yourself in a match with any female wrestler ever, who would it be? What kind of match would it be? And what kind of match would it be? So um, I'm going to make this a big match. Please. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to go, go big or go home. So it's not going to exactly. be just one woman. It's going to be multiple. Um, obviously because Alita and like team extreme, which I'm in love with Jeff Hardy too. Uh, <laughs> like I've been in, like I'm a fe- fan of edge Yes. as well. Like once I became a wrestler, um, I like, I really appreciate his work. I've been obsessed with like ladder matches. And okay. um, so for me, it would be a ladder match at wrestlemania which will take place at wrigley field um yeah and it would be for you know i don't even care it could be for krispy kreme donuts hanging at the top you know i don't care yeah (laughs) um no uh for like it could be like a title or whatever's hanging oh yeah i don't care what it's i just want to be in this match yeah and like lita of course um, Medusa is somebody else who Ooh. I've recently, yeah, got into, um, and I've been like interested in her stuff. Um, mm. Melina, people sleep on Melina, but she, I love Melina. Mickey James, Trish Stratus. Yep, yep. Um, ooh. I kind of, I'd be down to make it an intergender as far as like throw, throw Jeff Hardy and John Cena and Edge in there. You know what? We'll just <laughs> throw everybody in there. But, um, yeah, just have like a crazy fun ladder match, you know? Um, 
that's like a dream of mine. But if I had to pick a normal match, it would be Lita, 100%. Just me and her, one-on-one, and it could be for nothing. I wouldn't care. I For me to have a match with her would be amazing. Awesome, awesome. All right, so... Uh, before I let you go, uh, this is going to be a time where if you got, uh, I want you to, if you have any shows coming up, you know, mm-hmm. tell the audience about them and also, uh, how can people, uh, reach you on social media and also buy your merch? So as far as shows, I am making my Florida debut. Um, this is the first time that I've gone outside of the Midwest. So I'm very excited for, uh, GCW, uh, and that's going to be happening on February 13th. And I'm very excited for that. Um, and I'm having a match with, uh, I'm going to say her name incorrectly because she's from Paris. Uh, so um, I want to say R- R- Roche Chanel. Roche yes, Chanel. I was actually, I was just looking like uh, on your Twitter and stuff when I was trying to, you know, yeah. do a little re- I saw, uh, I think it's Race Chanel. I remember she was on an episode of yeah. AEW Dark or yeah, something. She's on, yeah, she's on a couple AEW Dark. So I'm excited mm-hmm. to see how that will um B, considering her and I are complete up op- on opposite ends of the spectrum as far as she's very into fashion and I'm cool just wearing some sweatpants so <laughs> right. uh, from like Marshalls or something but definitely check that out that's going to be February 13th um and then as of right now that's all I have for shows um and any upcoming shows if you're interested in Uh, Just follow me and I'll be posting like the flyers and whatnot on my Instagram and Twitter, um, which are both Missa Kate 11, M-I-S-S-A-K-A-T-E, the number 11. Um, I have a YouTube channel, Missa Kate. Um, I try to do vlogs if I remember, but I also try to post some matches up there, which there's a match of Sky and I at OVW on there. Um, Awesome. And... Yeah, I have a podcast. <laughs> I was like, I knew I'm forgetting something. A podcast with my trainer, Bryce Benjamin, called Agree to Disagree. Um, okay. It's on Spotify, and I believe it's on a couple other other platforms as well, but I know the main streaming service is Spotify, um, where we talk about anything and everything. And I know one thing that we're going to get into is actually something that you asked me about, which is intergender wrestling. So be looking out for that soon, okay. but... I think I got everything. Well, I have a Patreon, but like, when does your now? When does this podcast agree to disagree? When does it drop? So, excuse me. Um, we are. It was supposed to be every Wednesday, Mm -hmm. but since I started school again, I've been. It's my fault. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, I've been adjusting to the new schedule. So, once we, once I, I'm starting to get a handle on it now. So we're going to be pumping out some more episodes soon, hopefully. Um, if not this Wednesday, hopefully by next Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe it'll be like an every other Wednesday thing, but I definitely post about it. We have some social media, pod, uh, social media platforms. I think it's a 2 t 2 d pod um, on Instagram or Twitter or whatnot. But regardless, I post it. Oh, I had a bubble in my throat. I'm sorry. Mm, and regardless, I, I post it on like my regular social media pet. Pa- platforms my personal miss a kate 11 one um mm-hmm. so yeah look out for that too awesome and then where can people buy uh miss kate merch oh good one see thank you uh pro wrestling tees is a main one um and i am actually going to be dropping a new shirt very soon maybe today maybe tomorrow so keep a lookout but um Ooh. probably by the time this comes out it'll be there and your favorite shirt is on there yes. uh, the crispy cream shirt which I am obsessed with. I'm so happy. I, I'm fine if that's the last shirt I ever have in my life. <laughs> but me being me, I like having different options. So maybe not. But <laughs> but yeah, so check out check out my Pro Wrestling Tea store for some merch. Awesome. Well, Miss Kate, thank you so much. This was a blast. I had so much fun. Me too. Awesome, awesome. And uh, definitely uh, one of these days, you know, I want to have you definitely have you back. And, you know, and I also want you to uh, have sky and i can have you both on and we can uh, we can definitely we can talk some nerd stuff nerd stuff hell yeah i'm down anytime you want back let me know i'll i'll be i'll try to be better with my emails i'm sorry that's okay yeah it worked out and stuff we're all good i understand you know we have live we all everybody has lives outside of you know you know in that Mm -hmm. so and i'm not the center of anyone's universe so oh you're the center of your son's universe yeah, but I, he he he's he's more 
the center of my universe than I am his. So, because it's about. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. I can, See, I, you're the real sweetheart here. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I think you're rubbing off on me. So. <laughs> and that's so but thank you so much for uh taking some time to uh sit down with me um and uh we'll definitely see you definitely hopefully see you at a show very soon and guys once again you know check her out uh find her on youtube she's got a lot of cool stuff there and uh again buy her merch so buy my stuff no it's buy, buy thank her you stuff. I appreciate it so much buy and have a rematch with your son on monopoly what <laughs> what's that have a rematch with your son for Monopoly. See, oh, yeah. We're going to go. Got another one over you. Uh, best two out of three falls. There you go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much. Thank you. What's up, guys? This is Mr. 3% John Hudson here, the gold standard of professional wrestling, the doctor of gains and nomics, the nephew to Hercules, the grandson to Zeus, the son of the mother of gains, and the creator of gains babies. And you are listening to what you say with D D. A big thank you to Miss Kate for joining me today. She's a lot of fun. She really is a sweetheart. And I really hope every one of you enjoyed the interview because I had so much fun recording it with her. And please go support her by getting a shirt from either Tee Public or Pro Wrestling Tees. You can reach her on all major social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, she also has a Patreon. Everything can be found by looking up Missa Kate 11. That's M I S S A K A T E 1 1. Once again, you can find her in prowrestlingtees.com. She's got some really cool designs, especially the uh, Krispy Kreme donuts themed one. That is one that I will definitely be purchasing. So, yeah. So, once again, 25 episodes. Thank you guys so much for making this dream a reality. Uh, you heard my big announcement that uh, myself, along with uh, my co-host in the, the junkyard, Jovan Minacho, and Toilet Side Wrestling Talks own Brad Marcus will be your official host of the Chicagoland Championship Wrestling pre-show for the a upcoming April 17th show. And uh, details on how you can watch that will be coming in the near future. Also, stay tuned. Uh, there's some, uh, there's a couple of announcements that'll be coming down the line from uh, Pro Wrestling Junkies as well as my podcast as well. So we're only just getting started. And thank you again so much for listening. I really appreciate all the love and the feedback. And I'll see you in about another week with a brand new episode of What Do You Say with DDJ. Peace. <laughs>